In this video, we're going to be talking about Hess's law. Let's say we have this reaction here. A plus B turns into C and D, and we want to work out the enthalpy change for this reaction. However, they've told us in this question that the enthalpy change for this reaction cannot be measured directly. So, we're going to have to improvise. Instead of working out directly, we can work out an alternative route. For example, going to E plus F, and then from there, going to C plus D. Then, if we call this reaction 1, this reaction 2, and this one reaction 3, we can then say that reaction 1 is equal to 2 plus 3. So in other words, the first reaction has the same enthalpy change as the other two added together. And this is Hess's law. The enthalpy change is the same whatever route is taken. Now we're going to have to look at two very important definitions when it comes to using Hess's law. The first one is enthalpy change of combustion, which is given by this symbol. And delta H means enthalpy change, the small c means combustion, and the circle with the line through it means standard conditions. The definition for this is when one mole of a substance is completely burnt in oxygen under standard conditions. So for standard conditions, temperature has to be 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. Pressure has to be one atmosphere, which is around 101 kilopascals. And any solutions need to have a concentration of one molar. Okay, here's an example of an enthalpy change of combustion. This one is for methane. Notice that we have one mole of substance, in this case methane, and the rest of it is balanced to make sure that this stays as one mole. Here's an example of an enthalpy change of combustion. One mole of substance, in this case methane, is reacting with oxygen. So this is the enthalpy change of combustion for methane. Here's another example. In this case, we have the enthalpy combustion of ethanol. Again, we have one mole of substance, and the rest of it is balanced to make sure that the left stays as one mole. These are called the combustion products. So the next definition is for enthalpy change of formation. And this is a symbol. And the definition is when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements under standard conditions and all reactants and products are in their standard states. So here's an example for the enthalpy of formation of ethanol. So on the right, we formed one mole of compound, and in this case it's ethanol, and on the left we have the constituent elements, all in their standard states. Carbon's a solid, hydrogen and oxygen are gas. And here we have the enthalpy formation of ammonia. Again, we're forming one mole of a compound from its elements. And these are known as the constituent elements. Okay, so now that we know those definitions, let's move on to the next part, which is cycles in Hess's law. These cycles are going to be important when doing calculations. The first cycle is called a formation cycle. In the formation cycle, we put the elements at the bottom and point up to reactants and up to products. So let's say we want to work out this, our main reaction. And we've been given the enthalpy change for both arrows. Now, we know that Hess's law says if you want to go here, from reactants to products, and you can't do it directly, you can work it out indirectly by going down from here to here, and then up from here to here. And then we can just simply add the two arrows together to give us the overall reaction above. However, notice that one of the arrows in our formation cycle is not pointing the right way. It's this one. So, all we have to do is flip the sign. So that plus 300 becomes minus 300. And then we adjust it down here. Then we can add them together. And that should give us the final answer for the reaction above. So in the formation cycle, we have elements and we point up. And then we flip the sign on the left side and then we add them together. Okay, moving on to the next cycle. Here we have a combustion cycle. So in the combustion cycle, we point down from both sides to the combustion products. So again, let's say we want to work this out, and we've been given the values for both the arrows. We know that Hess's law says if you want to go this way, and you can't do it directly, we can go down from here to here, and then up from here to here. 
and then we can simply just add them together and that should give us the overall reaction. However, again, notice one of our arrows is not pointing according to Hess's law. It's this one. So we flip the sign and then we can add them together. And that should give us the energy change for the reaction above. So in the combustion cycle, we point down, then we flip the right arrow and then we add them together. Now, which one do we use when we do a calculation? It all depends on what kind of data they've given us. So if they give you formation data in the question, then you do a formation cycle. However, if they've given you combustion data, then you do a combustion cycle. And let's do an example now. So here we have a reaction and we want to work out the overall enthalpy change. This is the data they've given us. So because they've given us formation enthalpies, that means we're going to make a formation cycle, which means we're going to put the elements at the bottom and point up. Notice that everything's balanced equally. For example, on the reactant side, we have three sulfurs and we also have three sulfurs on the product side. Hence, we have to have three sulfurs at the bottom where we have the elements. And that's the same for all the elements. Make sure it's balanced. OK, next, we're going to work out the values. So can sulfur dioxide be formed from its elements? Yes, it can. And we can see that they've given us the value for the formation of sulfur dioxide. So we're going to have that on the left. Next, can hydrogen sulfide be formed from its elements? Again, yes, it can, because it's a compound. And they've given us the data for the formation of hydrogen sulfide. Now, since we have two of them, we're going to have to multiply it by two. So that gives us a total value of minus 338.2 on the left side. Moving on to the right side. Can sulfur be formed from its elements? Nope, because sulfur already is an element. And you can see that we have sulfur down here as well. So when you're going from an element to an element, there won't be an enthalpy change. Also notice they haven't given us the enthalpy formation of sulfur on the table below. Again, remember, you can't form an element from its elements. Again, remember, enthalpy of formation is only for the formation of compounds, not for elements. OK, finally, can water be formed from its elements? Yes, it can, because water is a compound. And down here, they have given us the enthalpy change for the formation of water. Since we have two water molecules, we're going to times it by two. And that gives us a total of minus 572 for the right side. Now, before we add them together, let's have a look and see which of our arrows is going the wrong way. So remember, Hess's law says to go like this, you can go down and up. That means this arrow is going in the wrong direction. So we have to flip the sign to give us plus 338.2. Now we can add them together. And that should give us a final answer of minus 233.8, which is the overall enthalpy change for the reaction above. In this video, we learned about Hess's law and the two important cycles. Then we've done an example with a formation cycle. In the next video, we'll look at combustion cycles. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.